Hello and welcome. You're watching 84 TV Radio News Update, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Adirayo Senami. Burkina Faso, on behalf of African countries, has petitioned the United Nations Human Rights Council to deliberate on systemic racism, police brutality and violence against peaceful protest. This request was prompted due to the anti-racist and police brutality protests across the world, which has not shown any signs of slowing down. The outrage was sparked by the murder of George Floyd and recently Richard Brooks by the police officers in the U.S. Meanwhile, 154 elephants have died in the span of two months in northwest Botswana. Regional Wildlife Coordinator Demakatsu Njebe says investigations on the actual cause of death are still being carried out. However, poaching and poisoning have been ruled out. Despite Africa's decline in elephant population as a result of poaching, Botswana, which remains home to a third of the continent's elephants, has experienced an increase in numbers from 80,000 to 130,000 since the late 1990s due to well-managed reserves. As Nigeria resumes commercial flights, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, FAN, on Monday said passengers are to arrive at airports three hours before scheduled flights as part of the new guidelines amid coronavirus pandemic. FAN said arriving early will enable effective checks and screening before boarding. Travelers are also expected to maintain two meters distance from each other at the airports, and persons not wearing their face masks will not be allowed into the premises. We'll take a break now. When we return, U.S. pilot lost crashes into North Sea. Details coming shortly. I am a refugee from Rwanda living in Kenya, but I'm also a nurse working on the front line during this COVID-19. I'm a refugee from Iran living in Sydney, Australia. I'm also a civil engineer running online series of live conversation with doctors for the community. I am a refugee in Ghana, but I'm also a nursing student. I help my community to stay safe by sharing this free information on COVID-19. I'm a South Sudanese refugee living in Nairobi, but I'm also a communication officer giving timely and verified information on COVID-19 to my community. I'm a refugee from Burundi living in Rwanda. I'm also a refugee college guidance counselor providing support to refugee students during this pandemic. I do it for you. I do it for you. I do this for you. I do it for you. I do this for you. I do it for you. Welcome back. You're watching 84 TV Radio News Updates. The United Kingdom Coast Guard on Monday launched a search and rescue operation to find the pilot of the United States fighter jet that crashed during a training mission in the North Sea. The U.S. Air Force said the jet went down after taking off from the RAF Lickenheath Base near the town of Milden Hall in eastern England. The cause of the crash and the status of the pilot are unknown. UK search and rescue have been called to support in the search. 84 TV Radio will bring you details as the story unfolds. A consultant geriatrician from the Liverpool University Hospital, Professor Asanga Edem Akman, said COVID-19 has amplified the worries of the aged who are most vulnerable to the disease. In an exclusive interview on 84 TV Radio on Saturday, Professor Akman said even if one can provide all that they need, loss of contact with family and friends can have a significant psychological impact on them. He therefore advised people living with much older relatives to support them to feel safe and connected, especially for those who live far from them. Shadow visits with extra precaution for hygiene could make isolation bearable, he added. As younger people, we might even have the virus and not have any signs of infection, exactly. but we could give it to them. Mm -hmm. So the advice here in the United Kingdom has been that we should try as much as possible to shield them and not visit them or be in the same space with them. But quite rightly, the consequence of that is that older people get isolated and get lonely. And even if they can be provided with all that they need, loss of contact with their friends and family can also have significant psychological impact on them. Award-winning Philippine journalist Maria Ressa was found guilty of libel and sentenced by Manila court to six years in jail on Monday in a decision called a major blow to press freedom. Ressa was found guilty of libeling a wealthy businessman on the Rapla, an online news website in 2012, which cited an intelligence report linking the man to murder. 
drug dealing, human trafficking, and smuggling. Her lawyers have, however, disputed any malice and said the case could not be prosecuted because the time limit for filing the complaint had passed. And in Nigeria, Jabi Lake Mall in Abuja has been shut down for two weeks by the Federal Capital Territory Ministerial Task Force on COVID-19. For hosting a concert, this violates the ban on public gathering and the 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. curfew. Star guests at the show, Naira Mali, was said to have flown in a private jet from Lagos alongside his crew, breaching the coronavirus ban on interstate travel. Chairman of the task team in the FCT, Ikaro Ata, expressed certainty that the Lagos State Government will take action against the artist for breaching the interstate travel ban, which is still valid in the state. Meanwhile, there's been backlash at the Federal Capital Territory Administration for granting Play Network permission to host the event in the first place. And that's it on 84 TV Radio News Updates, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. You can join the conversation on our website at www. 84tvradio.com. Please follow us on our social media platforms at 84TV Radio on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at 84TV Radio. Many thanks for watching. I am Adirayo Senami.